They work 24-7 around the clock, and they have solved the case. Well, howdy, all Unky T here. Uh, well, as you can tell from that little intro clip, they solved this case of the frost-proof murders of triple homicides. Uh, the details are in here, and uh, it's a little long. It's over 20 minutes, I think, but uh, the original video, like I say, is, is over 35 minutes, and I had a heck of a time trying to cut her down to a reasonable amount of time. Uh, one thing I could say is the audio is out again. It's kind of poppy and uh, uh, distorted at times, but uh, they need a new sound, man. But that aside, I need a new sound, man, too. So what the hell? Here it is. Enjoy the rest of the story, if you can. Today, I ask that you come here so that we can give you an update. I'm going to first and foremost tell you that we have simply the best homicide team, I believe, in the entire nation. In 11 years, we only have two unsolved homicides. And quite frankly, if some friends of those victims would talk to us, we would have zero unsolved homicides. And they did on this case what they do on every other case. They investigated this homicide as if our victims, Damian Tillman, Kevin Springfield, and Brandon Rollins, were their brothers. They worked 24-7 around the clock, and they have solved the case. We have locked up the three people that are responsible for the murders of these guys. Uh, there's a long part of this here video I cut out. That is just him uh, recapping the case. And if you want the information on that, I will put a mark here. And you can just click on this link that popped up. And you can go check out vo uh, video number one. Here are This is the trigger man. This is the guy who directly did the damage. His name's Tony Wiggins. He's known as TJ. He's 26 years of age. This is Mary Whitmore. She's 27 years of age, and she is the girlfriend of Tony Wiggins. And this is Robert Wiggins. He's 21 years of age, and he's the brother, obviously, to TJ. TJ is someone who his criminal history should shock your conscience. It does mine. TJ started to be arrested when he was 12 years old. He is currently only 26 years old. TJ has 230 felony criminal charges in his arrest history. Uh, you know, I, I, again, I got to interject because how in the hell are pieces of garbage like this allowed to be in society? I don't understand how many charges you got to take to prove that you cannot be allowed into a civilized society. I'm sorry, but this is just brutal. I didn't stutter. He had 230 charges in his arrest history, 15 convictions, and two times to state prison at only 26. There's a picture of Tony Wiggins. Here's the real Tony Wiggins. He's a thug. He's a criminal. He's pure evil in the flesh. He's wild and he's out of control. Mary has zero criminal history. Zero. Robert has one misdemeanor arrest. Virtually no arrest. Tony, 230 felony charges. They all are from the Lake Wells and Frostproof area, as was our victim. But the local tips that came in that were filtered, and there were hundreds that came to us, the predominant information we got was, look at T.J. Wiggins from Frostproof. It's not that they had any idea that he did it, but this guy is just mean. He's just violent. He's currently out on bond for breaking a guy's arm with a crowbar during a fight, waiting to go back to trial on other felony charges. 
This is a guy who they said will just walk up and punch you for no reason, or no reason to you, certainly a good reason to him. The three of them decided to go to the lake to fish. What's more wholesome than three friends, three close friends, fishing together in frostproof on a Friday night? And that's what they were doing. But first, Damien stopped at the Dollar General store. And we figured that out because we saw a Dollar General bag in the victim, Damien's, truck. And there were things that he'd purchased there. So we went to Dollar General, and I want to tell you, when you look at a professional business that was totally cooperative with us, it's Dollar General. Dollar General always works well with us because, you know, they want good customers and they don't care for criminals stealing their stuff or certainly committing murders. What we saw when we pulled the videotape was Damien standing in line to check out. The person behind him in line to check out is Newsflash. TJ. The person behind TJ is Robert. And we also determined that Mary was in the store. So let's go to a timeline. At 2156 hours, we call that 956 in the evening, Damien is checking out of the store with his product. He is followed out of the store by TJ, who checks out about 15 seconds later. And he's also followed by his brother and his girlfriend. At 10.06 p.m., only 10 minutes later, Brandon, who is now in the white pickup truck, frantically calls his dad and says, help. What we know is that Damien drove directly to the lake from Dollar General to meet his friends, Kevin and Brandon. What we know is that as a result of that, The murder occurred in short order, in less than 10 minutes. So we have all three of the suspects in the store with Damien and checking out 10 minutes before the frantic call for help. So our detectives now confirm that, hey, this guy Tony or TJ that we've received tips from is standing in line with and had a conversation with Damien in the store. We don't have the conversation because there's no audio, but from body language it was not violent or animated. It was just a normal conversation. So understand that now we're talking about frostproof in a rural part of the county. The shooting happened in a rural part of the county. And we literally have to walk the road and we go down a dirt path through the woods that opens up into a compound off the grid. That's how far out in the woods this is. So our detectives immediately interview Tony Wiggins and Robert and Mary Whitmore. Robert and Mary consistently lie to protect TJ. Robert Lice. So on Monday, we executed a search warrant at the compound. TJ was found to be in possession of two shotguns and two SKS 7.62 rifles. He's a convicted felon. He can't possess firearms, so he was immediately arrested. Our forensic investigations team found one, nine millimeter 
shell casing one at TJ's trailer. I called him Monday afternoon. I said, we need to compare some shell casings from the scene to a shell casing at our prime suspect's house. We plan to bring it over in the morning. He said, no, bring it over tonight and let's get started. The shell casing at the scene, the shell casing at TJ's house were all fired from a Smith & Wesson handgun. And both the shell casing at home and at the scene were fired from the same weapon, the weapon that committed the massacre in the hands of TJ. And we ask Robert and Mary if they would join us at the sheriff's office for a clarifying interview and they agreed to come up to the sheriff's office to talk to us. Tony had lawyered up. Mary made some admissions. She said, I bought the ammunition. TJ was with me. Newsflash, we got video of that too. That ammunition was purchased on the 9th of July. She also gave us once again, multiple stories about being with and confirming she was in the Dollar General that night. We've got evidence to show they were together less than 10 minutes before the murder. And then when we pressed her for the details and she realized, oh my gosh, they've got me, she lawyered up. Robert, up to this moment or up to this event, is not a bad guy, at least in the criminal sense. One misdemeanor arrest. When Robert's in line, he hears Damien tell the clerk, we're going fishing. Damien tells the clerk, because the clerk knows everybody, it's a small town. Yeah, I'm going fishing with Kevin. So Robert and TJ are talking, and he says, yeah, uh, Damien's going fishing with Kevin. And TJ says, what? Kevin's going to be there? So when they leave the store, TJ tells Robert, who's driving, go to the lake. Now, they had no plans to go to the lake until TJ told Robert, go to the lake. And they did. Damien now is at the lake, and he has met up with, during this time frame, Kevin and Brandon, who are in the white truck. And they have turned their trucks so that they're door to door talking to each other in the middle of the road. Robert drives and pulls up behind the white truck that's driven by Kevin with Brandon in the passenger side. TJ exited his truck. When he did, Brandon got out of his vehicle and shined a light back to see who was pulling up behind them. T.J. rushed up to Brandon, pushed him against the truck, pulled the handgun out, and said, where's Kevin? Well, Kevin's sitting in the driver's seat right there. And he looks and sees Kevin. He runs around, he being T.J., runs around between the red truck and the white truck. He points the gun at Kevin and TJ says, where's my truck? Kevin goes, I don't know what you're talking about. Yeah, you do. Where's my truck? You sold the engine out of my truck. Ke Kevin said, I don't know what you're talking about. At that moment in time, according to the information we've received, TJ hits Kevin.
Uh, for those of you who are a little squeamish or don't like to have some mental imagery put into your head, uh, you might want to skip this next little bit. I will uh, put a notification up there when the description's finished. Damien starts to open the door of his vehicle and is screaming at TJ, put the gun away, put the gun away, put the gun away. TJ's out of control screaming, where's my truck? And he starts shooting Kevin and Brandon inside of the white truck. It's estimated, and this is still under investigation, he shoots him nine to ten times between the two of them. Then he turns on Damien and begins to shoot Damien, who's got his door open, but is in his truck several times. Then he goes back to Kevin's truck, and during his excitement, now he has dropped the magazine to his firearm, and he can't find it. So he opens the truck door, and Kevin falls out on the ground. And that's where Kevin's found. He finds the magazine to the handgun that he drops when he goes back, points the gun back. And then he calls Robert. Robert says he's sitting in the truck. He said, I never got out of the truck. And when he pulled the gun, I started to get out of the truck. By that time, it was all over with. You can believe what of that you want to. Mary, TJ's girlfriend, she doesn't know anything. And this is one mad, mean woman. She's not cooperating. She's not talking. She becomes incensed at the detectives when they try to confirm the spelling of her last name because it's not spelled in the traditional way you would think you would smell, spell Whitmore. She's saying nothing, but she's there the entire time. And she's lying to protect him. TJ then tells Robert, come here. Help me put Damien in the truck. So Damien now and we don't know the lineage, the details, because they're not given to us any better than what I'm about to tell you. They grab Damien. We don't know if the, he's already pulled out of the truck or if he's in the truck because there is, there is blood evidence all over the place. But they pick him up and heave him over into the back of the pickup truck with his foot sticking up over the edge of the bed. And then they leave. Uh, well, that's the end of the horrific details. They go to an undisclosed location. And supposedly strip down the gun, take it apart, and throw it away. They immediately go to McDonald's in Lake Wells and order 10 double cheeseburgers and two McChickens. While they're standing in, li or in line, they go through the drive through It's very quiet. TJ simply says, we weren't there. And that's all the conversation that they will admit to. We believe there's more than that. We found throughout the investigation that they lied for TJ that she bought ammunition for TJ. And then later on Saturday, keep in mind this happened on Friday night, Robert takes that truck, which belongs to another relative, to a car wash because it's coated in red mud and cleans it up. We asked, did you clean the inside? Oh no, we didn't clean the inside. Well, duh, they did. We've tra we found trace evidence of blood where TJ was sitting in the passenger side of the vehicle. That's being packaged up and taken to FDLE. So at the end of the day, 
We've charged T.J. Wiggins appropriately with three counts of first-degree murder. At this point in the investigation, we have charged Robert with three counts of accessory and one count of tampering with evidence. We've charged Mary with three counts of accessory to the murder and one count of tampering. The investigation is ongoing. The folks who lost their loved ones that night are, are poor people. We've had a lot of people offer, we've had a lot of people offer to give us more money for a reward. We don't need that. But if there's an inclination to help these folks bury their loved ones, I'm certain that would be appreciated because there's nothing worse than having to bury your child unless it's you're having to bury your child and you don't have any money. All right, my friends. I tell you, that is one sad story. And that is one sorry group of people who are allowed to be living in this world. I don't understand it. I don't like it. So what are you going to do, right? Society's attitudes have to change towards these evil pieces of garbage that are still out there. Anyways, uh, this video originally was over 35 minutes. Uh, as you can see, I cut an awful lot out. I, I don't think I could have cut much more out uh, because it would have lost part of the story. But I will say uh, I did what I could. So, and that said, check out these videos. Link, like, subscribe, and share, and do all that stuff, and I'd appreciate it. And, you know, you'll catch all the new videos that come out. And here's some links to some other videos you might not have had before. So you all have a blessed day. You take care of yourself, take care of each other, and we'll see you real soon. Bye for now.